Inside Premiere, I've already got the clip on the timeline that we're going to use for this tutorial. First, I'm going to scrub through the timeline and find the point that we want to freeze. I think that this one will do. Now we can cut the track at this point. To right click on the cutoff part and then select Add Frame Hold. And this option will freeze the rest of the video at the current frame. Next, I will duplicate the second part by holding the Alt key combined with the left mouse button and then drag the video one track up. For the next step, make sure you've got the top layer selected and then head over to the effects control panel. And in here, in the opacity section, we're going to click on this pen icon, which is also known as the free draw bezier tool. And now we can draw a mask, but first we need to zoom in to be able to work more precisely. 200% should be good enough to start drawing the mask around our subject, the woman on the bicycle. In this case, I'm going to start with her right arm and then add as much points as needed by left clicking in the program monitor. Just take your time and make the mask fit as good as possible. But for now, I will speed up this part so you don't have to wait. Okay, two more points to add and the first mask is done. And if I set the monitor back to fit, you can see the mask that we just created. But we could add them by making small masks. First, let's zoom back to 200% and then move over to the point that we need to add. We can now simply click on the pen icon to create the second mask. And then again, use the left mouse button to add the mask point and draw a mask. Next, we're going to animate the masks. We're going to enable keyframes for scaling and position by clicking on the stopwatch icon here. Then move a couple of frames forward and zoom in by chasing the scaling option. And if it looks better, you can also play around with the position. And if you're happy with the results, you can move the keyframes to the end of the clip. But now after scaling and repositioning, the background is a little distracting. And we can fix this by adding two effects. In the effects panel, I'm going to search for the Gaussian blur effect. I'm going to apply this effect to the cutoff part, the bottom layer, and then move over to the effects control panel. And in here we're going to set blurriness to 100 and we'll also enable repeat edge pixels. And the second effect that we're going to add is the black and white effect. And this does exactly what it sounds like. It makes the clip black and white. For the next steps we first need to nest the layer that contains the mask. We can do this by right clicking on the layer and then select nest. Then give the nested sequence a name and click OK. OK, a nested sequence created, we can now add some effects to it. In the effects panel I'm going to search for the radial shadow effect. I'm going to apply this effect to the nested layer that contains the mask and as you can see this has now created a bit of a shadow. But in this case we don't want a shadow, we want to add a hard outline or a stroke around our subject. I'm going to start by changing opacity to 100%. And I'm also going to select white instead of black. And next we can reposition the shadow by playing around with the light source values. I'm going to try to make it somewhat equal on all sides of the subject. In the next steps we're going to add some optional items in the background. Let's start by making some room for some new layers by moving the nested sequence layer a few tracks up. The first layer that I'm going to add are some ink splashes or blots. I've got to be sure to use images that include transparency, like a PNG file for example. Anyway, for this demo I'm going to use this ink stroke background image. I will place this on the second track and extend the duration. And as you can see, this ink stroke is now visible between the background. On the other track I'm going to add some text, so let's type something fancy. And then inside the Essential Graphics panel I'm going to change the size of the text and also the space between the lines. And then move back to the Selection tool and then reposition the text. And as I mentioned, this text layer should be on the third track. This will bring it behind the main subject and before the background. And of course we also need to extend the text layer on the timeline. In the next step I'm going to change the color of the ink stroke. In the effects panel, we're going to search for the change to color effect. And I'll apply this effect to the ink background layer. 
In the effects control panel, we're going to select black for the from color and we'll change to U, lightness and saturation. And there you have it, pink. In the next steps, we're going to animate the background and the text. First, I'm going to select the background ink layer and then enable keyframes for scaling in the effects control panel. Then I will also enable keyframes for rotation. And in this case I'm going to put the first keyframe at the beginning and then change the value and put the second keyframe at the end. And now this ink background layer is rotating and zooming out and that's the opposite of the main subject which zooms in. We're going to do the same for the text layer, we're going to select it on the timeline and then enable keyframes for scaling and rotation. Then move the first keyframes to the beginning, then change the values and move the keyframes to the end. The final step for this tutorial. We're going to add a simple dip to white transition and to do this we first need to nest all the layers. So I will select all the layers, then right click and select nest. Then give the nested sequence a name and click OK. And then inside the effects panel we're going to search for the dip to white effect. I'm going to add this transition to the clips and then inside the effects control panel set it to center. And I should also mention that you might need to render the effects first for some smooth playback on the timeline, as you can see here by this red line. You can render the effects by hitting the Enter key and then Premiere will start rendering. And then after rendering we can have a look at the final result. And that's it for this tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it.